Hey, what's going on, Teach Better fam? It's Chris here, and I am bringing you a bonus episode from last weekend's Admin Mastermind Rewind and live Q&A bi-weekly family check-in with Ray Hewitt and Dave Schmidto. We hope you enjoy the awesome conversations and discussions that took place last weekend during this event, and we hope that you follow us in the future. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and Twitter for any of these events coming up at Teach Better Team. We hope you enjoy this episode and hope it brings a lot of positivity to start your week. Oh my goodness, we are live for our bi-weekly family check-in. We've got Dave Schmidto here who has literally crashed all of 2021. I love that we get to hang out every other Sunday, Dave. But we also Uh, have the one and the only Miss Lindsay Titus, which I'm just going to put that out there. We really need her today. Dave and I were like maybe venting a little bit and then we were like, well, thank God Lindsay's here. So we're going to get into all the fun of our bi-weekly family check-in. As a reminder, if you're new to our Sunday Hangouts, this happens every other Sunday. We take your questions. We have a ton to talk about on our end in terms of mastermind themes. We have something massive to celebrate with Lindsay and anything in between, but feel free in the comments for your name. Tell us where you're viewing from, what your plans were today. Hopefully you had a wonderful day. And we'll be right back to get this party started. Hey, everyone. Oh, my gosh. We're so excited to be here for our Biology Family Check-In. Do us a massive favor right now and share this stream to wherever you're viewing it at. We're streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Go brag on the fact that you're watching this. We really would love to have all of our family and friends here. And obviously, we'll be taking your questions live. Oh my gosh, Dave, Lindsay, how you doing? Doing great until you said, Dave, you're crashing 2021. <laughs> like so many different ways to take that. I hope you don't mean like I'm causing 2021 to just like no. crash. You just mean I'm hanging out with you a lot. Is that what you meant? Yeah, because Dave, the oh, bi okay. family check-in was started like three years ago and we used to just go live and talk shop and take questions and this this used to be the only time we were live all week long until we like definitely changed that pattern but i love that you've been in addition to this in 2021 okay. it's wonderful so it's a good crash it's a it's a gentle crash i got it's you okay amazing crash and lindsay titus is actually the one crashing so lindsay how are you Oh, I am doing so fabulous. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I love chatting with you guys. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so fun. You know, it's really funny. I always look forward to these. These are This is actually our last one as we move into a summer break. So this is the last bi-weekly family check-in for, for a period of time. But I will say, Lindsay, I kind of needed some Lindsay Titus in my life today. I feel like you just knew that we needed your energy and that's what got you here. <laughs> I'm all for that. I'm here. <laughs> Truth be told, we always need her energy. <laughs> Tonight, you were just hap- you just happened to trick her into joining us. Thank God. And maybe that's why it was such a hard day, because I kept thinking, I just got to get through the day. I'll get to hang out with Lindsay Titus later on, and she'll make it all better. So There we go. That was that was a great mic Carrie, uh, to Carrie, I do want to say hello to all of our friends that are here. We've got Becky Thal here with us. Livia is here. Danielle is here. We actually have a lot of viewers right now. It's so great to see all of you. Feel free to throw in the comments uh, all your thoughts. And literally everybody is like, yep, we need Lindsay daily. So I love this mindset. Um, I know that we go live every other Sunday. I know that you both, and, and I guess myself included, are familiar faces to the Teach Better family. Dave and I are members of the team. Lindsay is as involved as humanly possible and a speaker within our speakers network. But in case people are new, maybe this is their first bi-weekly family check-in, they're not aware that they should be throwing their questions in the comments right now. And I, really, questions are fair game. It can be anything personal, professional, 
anything about the team that you want to know. Um, this is just a hangout. But I'm going to start with you, Dave. Do you mind going to going through like who are you? What do you do? Why is your face on camera? Just in case people. Well, okay. No, I can't answer the last part. I have no idea why my face is on camera. And you all, you got me scared again, Ray Hewitt. You scared. told people they could ask personal questions tonight. What are you doing? Well, what's oh the my gosh. Actually We're ask- here to answer like tactical classroom questions. And you're saying, ask any personal questions you want. So I'm kind of nervous right now. I feel like I should just tell, tell all right now before they ask. What are they going to ask? Like, where'd you get your sweatshirt from, Dave? Like, this is like a hard question. <laughs> okay. Just do they want to know more about you? Like, hey, Dave, where okay. do you live? Or things like that. Like, maybe they want to get to know you. Fair enough. So my name is Dave Schmidt. My social security number is... Two, <laughs> oh, no. Um, no. Dave Schmidt, Director of Leadership and Development with the Teach Better team. Been an educator now for 22 years. Oh, that's a crazy long time. Um, really done all the things in, in K-12 teacher, administrator, central office. And now I am just a Ray Hewitt and Lindsay Titus groupie. That's who I am. That's what I do. That's fair. I, that was going to be the same description I gave. So you did a really good job. <laughs> Lindsay, what about you? In case people may not be as familiar with you as they should be, because they should be listening to your podcast, reading your blogs, like seeing your presentations within our Teach Better Speakers Network. I know there's an event they will need to register for. But in case this is their first time on social media, will you tell us a little about yourself? Absolutely. Hey, everyone. Uh, So I'm Lindsay. I live in Rochester, New York. Um, And during the day, I'm a K-12 behavior specialist. So I work with all students, all staff, all leaders, everybody in my district across 10 buildings um, for all things behavior. So uh, I do that during the day. Um, I'm also in classes uh, for my administrative certification. So that is wrapping up this August. Um, and then I'm coach and speaker with Define University, and through that platform um, is really how I got connected with Teach Better. And as Ray said, I kind of do all the different networks within Teach Better, um, and love absolutely every single one of them. Um, but really, my goal is to help others understand behavior and the mindset behind it in simple and easy ways. Okay, I Dave, I don't want to monopolize this conversation, but Lindsay, I don't think I understood that you were like in 10 different buildings. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, managing behavior, don't get me wrong, is like something that I really, really would have loved support in, always need support in. There's so many different things you can do. But across 10 buildings, I mean, you see it all. I mean, you're not just working with one population in one specific area. 10 buildings is a ton of student contact. Yes, 10 buildings, gen ed and special ed, kindergartners through seniors. Vir- this year, virtual and in person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So can I, can I follow up on that then, Ray? Because this is fascinating. The fact that you are in 10 different buildings and you are behavior specialist, behavior expert. You help those of us that struggle with managing behaviors and managing um, the outcomes, or at least our perceptions of behaviors. You don't necessarily know every single kid in all the buildings that you work in. Do you? So how do you, Yes. (laughs) right? How how do you then help teachers manage kids if you don't know the kids? Good question. Oh man. And honestly, it's so funny. Like three years ago, you would have asked me that and be like, I don't know. (laughs) Great question. (laughs) Um, but honestly, so this is my, I'm, I'm about to wrap up, finish up my 15th year in education. And I think one of the ways that I can do exactly what you just asked is really listening to what people are saying, but also being able to hear the hidden message behind it. So if someone says to me, Hey, I need some help. This student will not pick his head up off the desk. I've tried everything. You know, it's just not okay. I need you to come in and help me. I actually, I don't hear so much the student's head is on the desk. I hear more from the teacher perspective. I, I, I'm out of, I'm out of ideas. What mm-hmm. is this saying about me as an educator? And so I'm able to really hear that and say, I hear you. I see you. You're doing exactly what you need. We've got this together. Let's go. And so because what I've learned about behavior, it is less about the strategy. It is less about finding that one tool or trick that's going to work, because in all honesty, it's going to work maybe that time, but not in a different setting with a different person on a different day with different, you know, with different variables. 
But what I do know is how to connect with a person. I do know how to connect with the person that's in front of me. So it really doesn't matter whether I've met the student or not. I can hear what they're saying, understand it based on a feelings level, and then help them through that moment. Because if they're feeling good, then they're going to see it with a lot more clarity, they being the teacher or the adult I'm talking to. Lindsay, this is the problem with going live with you, is that I can't moderate a conversation because all I want to do is like have my mouth open and then be like, but wait, I have a boatload of questions and then I put it on my camera. So I need that. That that is always what I need as an educator in the classroom, regardless of what the year is, regardless what students I'm working with. If I'm at the point that I'm asking for help, that means that I am so out of options. It means that I'm considering myself a failure and it means that I'm already approaching you like at my wits end, right? Like I have nothing else to give at all. And so for you to see that perspective and not just give me a strategy, I'm, my mind is blown. Every time I think I've interacted with this dilemma, I've been handed a strategy and then it's like, okay, if it doesn't work, then I'm still in the same point that I was before. And if it does work, will it work forever? And I think that your approach is kind of like, Dave, what we talk about with grids. Like, I want to teach you how to fish. I don't just want to hand you a fish, right? I think that those, that's an important difference. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big, you know, about, I'm going to say like 10 years into my career, I really shifted from feeling like I needed to solve all the world's problems. Mm -hmm. And really, I needed to solve problems with people. That it wasn't, wasn't my responsibility to fix everything else. It was my responsibility to show up as the person that I was, being true to who I am, and helping, right? And that realizing helping could mean different, a whole bunch of different things. It might not always be the same thing. But what I realized is that it is so important to presume that competence in everybody, whether it's our students or our staff. So if a staff member is coming to me, I already hold the standard that they've, they've asked probably other people. I'm not usually the first person that people jump to, you know, jump to asking or they have looked online. They've looked in resources. So I'm I'm making that it, it, it is an assumption, but it's a, you know, a kind of a best best of intentions assumption in that they're stuck. They are so stuck. And so if I simply say here, do this, again, might work that one time, but I haven't taught them anything. And therefore, they're dependent on me. And I the one thing I've learned is I don't want people dependent on me. I want people to say, you help me. I know it. I can apply it. Thank you. You know, and now I get teachers like, I'm really hoping I don't have to call you this year. <laughs> And I'm like, I get it. Trust me. And I'm like, and if you don't, that means that what we did last year together worked and you learned and you've grown. So, Ray, remember when earlier you said people want to ask personal questions? Does that hold true for me too? <laughs> I think so. Why not? Okay. So, so Lindsay, I, I'm going to um, unload some of my stuff on you, but then I'm going to ask you a, a personal question. So when I was a building administrator, I, I took pride in schmittleizing people. So they would ask a question, I would spit another question back at them. And I, I feel like you are like the magic mirror on the wall for a lot of people. You really help people reflect. People will come to you with problems and you help them internalize and figure out what they're feeling, what they're thinking, so they can work through things and become independent and problem solvers on their own. Where I struggled though, so I could do that at work, super easy. I would truly schmittleize every adult I interacted with. But at home, I was tying my seven and eight year old kids shoelaces. I would be walking around with Kleenex and blowing noses for kids. Like I was solving all the problems at home because at work, I was a different person and helping people reflect. I'm, I'm curious with, with your little girl at home, um, how, do you, how do you handle her? Are you training her to be completely independent where she doesn't need mom or are you compensating at home and smothering? <laughs> So I, again, my first five years teaching, um, I was, I was, I was married, I was single and then married, right? So I had, um, you know, once I had Kaylee, I had already gone through my own burnout mode. Like I had taught for five years. I was that, you know, that um, statistic. I burnt out my fifth year. 
I left a month early. I left in May. We finished in June. because I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't walk in the building anymore. So I spent that next year uh, really trying to figure out what the heck am I going to do? I can't, I can't not do this, right? I'm already, and, and it's because exactly what you said, I was giving so much of myself to every single thing. So when Kaylee was born, you know, between my husband and I, I said, she's, we're working on independence. And he looked at me and she's like, she's a newborn. <laughs> and I said, well, not, not today, <laughs> but really early on. And so from the time Kaylee was one, she has had independent time in her, in her schedule, in her routine. Um, so it looked <laughs> very different at one years old than it does now at almost seven. Um, but I don't think I compensate because what I've done over the last three years is figure out my standards because I got so tired of this is teacher Lindsay, this is mentor Lindsay, this is um, wife Lindsay, this is mom Lindsay, I, and I had no idea who Lindsay was because she was. Mm. I was pretending to be all these different people. So three years ago, when I said enough is enough, there's got to be an easier way. The easier way was to stop doing this and to start doing this, and I brought it all into me. So now. If I'm at school, if I'm home, if I'm here, wherever I am, I'm Lindsay. You get me. My daughter gets it too. If we're out in public and she starts to act up, mom comes out. Like behavior, behavior specialist slash mom comes out. Um, and so I think for me, that's that's why I can do that. Um, now, certainly, there I'm not perfect. There are moments I scream. She goes, "You yelled." I said, "I'm sorry." And we have our we we apologize. We talk about it. But my daughter also has gratitude statements all around her bedroom. She has a list of things that make me smile. She has um, contingency maps that she knows her her thoughts, behaviors, and her feelings and how they come together. Because I don't I don't know how to do anything different now because this is solely who I am. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um. This is the problem. I'm telling you, I like need to get somebody else on the team to go live with Lindsay because all I'm doing is just. <laughs> Joking it up. Lindsay, this process that you just described, which by the way, I've never heard described that way and it was perfect in every way, is this concept of knowing yourself well enough that then you can live who you are all the time versus striving to be what you know you might think you should be. Ah, 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 bring in Shouldville. This is my favorite. <laughs> um, because of the situation that you're in. And I I have never thought about how important that is in, I mean, I've thought about it in terms of like coaching other teachers with the work I do or being in the classroom, you know, as a teacher, but never, and I guess personally, but never in the way of like how important it is when managing behavior in the classroom and how that same structure exists in all facets of our life. I I love that. We are getting questions. I do want to get to these questions, but Dave, do you feel like she just like, Schmidt you or, or what do well, you she, think? She wrecked me because I, I also have questions. I want to make sure we answer their, their questions first. Yeah. But no, Lindsay, if if we don't answer this live, I'm calling you when we're done because I've got another question I've got to ask. Okay. We're answering it live. Hold on. So really quick, I really think that this is important to address because I was thinking the same thing and you didn't quite dive into it, Lindsay. So just quickly, uh, Jillian on Twitter is saying, I'm assuming, I'm assuming like the child's home life is a part of supporting that child. And what you did, Lindsay, at the very beginning was you were like, yes, the student matters, but when a teacher's coming to me, I'm considering the teacher. Now, I love that approach. I think there's so much positivity in that, so many pros, but this also has to obviously be a part of it at some point, right? Absolutely, yeah. So I think what it is though, is I I jump in to, you know, jump in being to help the teacher, right? Make sure they are present. What often happens, so when we are we are working with behavior, right? Challenging behavior is not challenging for the student. It's challenging for us because mm -hmm. we don't know how to solve that problem with them in a safer, more efficient, effective way. It might be unsafe for the child, but it's I don't look at it as challenging for them because they're doing what they need to do to solve the problem that they're having. So when, that's why I look at the teacher first, because if the teacher is calm, we know this right? A dysregulated adult cannot regulate a child. We know this. If I'm, if I'm at a 10, my daughter is naturally going to rise to a 10 because that's where I'm at. Like I need to be where it like is in my, 
kind of you know regulation period. So I go to the teacher first. And in the in the, in the uh, immediate situation, I'm I'm working with that teacher. But absolutely, this is very much a very close second question that I'm asking. Tell me, I always start with strengths too. I don't I don't dive into the challenge the behavior first. It's a tell me about this kid. What lights him or her up? What brings a smile to their face? Because I also know really quickly if a teacher can't ask that answer that question then I'm thinking, okay, we need to anchor to relationships and connection. If they're, they can't do this, aren't doing this, won't do this, then we are already down that path. And I want to bring them to be able to see the child for the whole child. But then I will start diving into what do we know about home? What do we know about last year? What do we know about the child? Now, sometimes it does go here if it's a bigger situation. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's as simple as, you know, some of, I'm going to say simple, but some of those just connection activities of, hey, can you spend two minutes a day, like the two by 10 strategy, can you spend two minutes a day for 10 days just talking to the kid, just talk to them, get to know them, and let's see where that goes. But absolutely, when we're thinking of the whole child, that's the whole child, which means anywhere the child goes, within the school building, as well as out of the school building. Super, super important. I like the the chronological order that you laid that out because I couldn't agree more with your your mindset on that. You know, it's interesting. Uh, Liv threw a question in here, and I, her and I were just talking about this. Liv, when did we meet? I'm having like a brain moment where I'm forgetting, but Liv, I think it was Friday. We just discussed this. I'm so glad she brought it up. Uh, but she wants to know what to do when a student is no longer working with with the other support in the classroom. So she says an EA, this could be for those of you that are watching a teaching assistant, some sort of paraprofessional, another teacher in the classroom. But when you're working with a student who needs support for whatever reason, we are now providing that student support, but that student is struggling having a positive relationship with, with the people that are there to, to help them. You know, do you have any ideas on that? Yeah, so ironically enough, this happened to me <laughs> in my classroom. So when I when I was in the classroom, I had a 611 special class, uh, kindergarten through second grade. And I had a second grade student who I was that person. So he wanted to be with his uh, with his para all day long, did not want me. So when I came in, we were in like power struggle central. It was like you we were not getting anywhere. And this is pre my understanding of mindset, pre understanding of things. So I kept pushing, right? I kept pushing. And now knowing now what I know, what I would have done and what I share is, and this is, again, one of the harder things because it does take time. This is not any of those, anytime we're talking about rebuilding relationships, it takes time. It does not happen overnight. But in a, in a behavior analytic realm, we call it, um, what do we call it? Pairing. <laughs> totally just lost my train of thought. Um, so we have to repair, we have to reconnect. And so what that looks like is we have to look at where did their kind of relationship go south, so to speak. So was it that the student starts to see the, you know, para as solely someone that gives work or gives demands or tells them, gives them feedback, but they're not seeing them as somebody that's also celebrating them, giving them praise, you know, lifting them up. And so, the, again, to keep it simple, the easiest thing is to repair. And so have that para spend some time doing student-centered activities, doing those fun activities. So if this kid really likes Ninja Turtles, the person brings in a Ninja Turtle book and says, I thought of you this weekend. I just wanted to give you this. And they walk away, you know, to look at in the classroom. I'm not saying you have to go buy them gifts. But like, I thought of you. I brought this into the classroom library. Just, I really hope you love it as much as I do, and then walk away. It's a lot of those give and then leave so that they start to be like, oh, they don't just ask me to do work or they don't just tell me these things, uh, but that this is someone I, I like, this is someone I get to know. Um, it can also be as simple as, you know, so I would say be an ace when you're interacting. So acknowledge by their first name, so the A stands for, C provide a compliment or some type of, you know, positive statement, E, eye contact and proximity, and then get out of there. So often mm -hmm. we attach that, you know, hey, how are you doing today? I'm so glad to see you. Hey, get out your math book. It's time to turn to page two. And it's like, 
wait a second, like, where did that, right? So instead it's, oh my gosh, look at that shirt. That is, well, how did you know blue is my favorite color? Oh my goodness, I love it, high fives. I can't wait to see you later and then go. Now again, these are, they take time, right? I think that's the piece. But when I hear like, she, like she can't even talk to him because he doesn't like her, as the adult, we've got to say, where did that come from? And what is it that I can do so this student sees me as somebody positive and fun and exciting and not the opposite? I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, it makes a ton of sense. Dave, I feel like we should practice. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I'm going to give you eye contact. So if you could get ready, that would be great. Hey, Dave, I really like your hat. Wait, what was that? And then eye contact. I'm done now. Peace. Done. I feel good. so connected right now. That's good. Uh, <laughs> Liv is in the comments saying that that she really appreciates those tips. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. Those were like they seem so easy, but we forget. That's the problem, Lindsay. Like we just forget because our emotions get the best of us. And if we actually sit down and say, "Okay, hold on, I've lost this relationship with the student. What's something I can do?" All those ideas are like, "Well, duh." Of course you can do those things. Well, and Dave, I'm curious to hear your question. So uh, it's gonna, it's now a follow up to that one too. So thank you, because it's it. The question just got bigger and bigger and bigger. So um, let me start with this. So Lindsay, you come to the Tuesday evening mastermind, and mm -hmm. typically when you're there, you you sit in the back and just absorb and you listen, and I I love that because I, I see your. Your, your, your mind is constantly racing. And whenever I call on you, you jump in, you've got thoughts, but you're just trying to absorb as much as possible because administrators can sometimes be an interesting group of people to listen to, learn from, engage in, in conversations. Thank God our evening mastermind group is an amazing group, but typically administrators are interesting. So I, I was doing work recently with a group of administrators and I had them do this activity that your your tip just reminded me of. I, I tell them to, to list out all of the staff members they work with and write down a birthday present they could buy each staff member to determine I if they really it. know. I know. It's hard. Um, but just to see if they know what makes the people tick and what their passions or what their interests are besides like a, a Starbucks card or a, a something generic. Like, do you know these people individually? And I had an administrator recently who said, this is all good, but my staff knows I'm not touchy-feely. They know that that's not who I am. I am just brass tacks. I'm just down to earth. I don't need to get into all of that wishy-washy kumbaya type of stuff. They know that's who I am, right? So here, I guess here's the question that I was going to ask. So you are amazing at having people embrace who they are. Define university. It's all about defining you. But yet you also strive to make people better. Like you've got this day of discovery coming up where you're trying to make people better. So how do you reconcile people that say, this is just who I am and they accept their identity, but it doesn't necessarily match what's best for everybody else, like the kids or those that they serve. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know, I think one of the things I've learned, I'm going to say this is even more over like the last six months is if somebody is not willing to, or, or ready to say, I want to change, this isn't serving me, then, then I can't do a ton. Then mm. I simply can show what's possible, right? So I might ask some questions to say, you know, have you ever noticed that some staff, you know, are the, you know, head down in meetings and are the first to leave and, and aren't really, you know, full of your, you know, school climate and culture, you know, I'll try and tie it to something that usually, you know, an administrator would latch onto, you know, would you be interested in hearing some ways you might be able to get, you know, all of your staff engaged? But if they're like, no, I'm good, then I'm going to say, all right, if you ever, you know, are thinking of that, I'm here, let me know. Um, but for a lot of the staff I work with, I, I don't tend to have that because they're reaching out to me. What I do have in terms of some resistance to some of this inner work, that's really what it is. Um, I recognize that resistance is still just an emotion. It's a response to what they are feeling. And so when people are sharing that, you know, I'm not a feelings person, I they might not be on the surface, but at the end of the day, our thoughts connect to our feelings, which directly relate to our actions. So I might say, right, on the surface, you know, but if we if we don't do that, like this is where we're at and that's okay. 
Um, but I think for me, it took a long time. You know, my field in general did not honor feelings for a whole long time. Uh, <laughs> and I was always the one I always kind of intentionally left my letters off my name. So I was like, I wholeheartedly believe in emotions. I am one of the most emotional people you will meet. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was like, I don't know about this. Luckily, my field is kind of, you know, caught up. And I was like, okay, maybe I wasn't so backwards thinking in all of this. Um, but but ultimately, I think it really does come down still to just those quality of the questions that you ask to open up conversation. Tell, tell me more about where you're coming from. Tell me more about what lights you up as a principal or an administrator. Because then I find with those questions, then I can then I can start weaving in some of the work that I do. Dave, I didn't realize that you were so emotional. That's really good to know. About <laughs> right? Yeah. Can I tell you how many times a day you make me cry, Ray? Like that's not true. Don't say that live on camera. <laughs> that's not true. Maybe that's the answer was true. zero. Maybe the answer was zero. They're happy tears. Happy tears. <laughs> You better not be crying because of me, Dave, unless you're just crying because you're so excited because we get to see each other on Wednesday. Exactly it. That's it. That's it. I'm so like my whole world revolves around June 2nd. That's that's where I'm at right now. So one other like quick, quick thing though that I'm thinking of is I have had, and I mean, I think the more that I get comfortable in speaking this work and doing this work, I mean, I've had, you know, I, I've been in conversations with people and they're like, I'm not willing to change. And I said, and I will honor that. Like, and you don't have to. But a year ago, I would have been like, but that's what I'm here to do, right? Like, I need to help you. Like, this person said I had to come or I had to be, I have, this, this student has hours. I have to change you. And at the end of the day, I so, I live by the standard. I can't change anybody but myself. And mm -hmm. so I try not to get into those, you know, pieces. If they're not, if they're not there yet, doesn't mean I walk away. It just means I ask different questions. I use different, um, kind of different ways to come at it. Um, I bring different examples. And I think that helps, you know, me stay connected. It's, it really truly, as much as it's about connecting to our students, connection is connection is connection. It doesn't matter age. It's, a, it's an inner trait that we all, that we all hold and that we all desire. We just all have different levels. And so for me, that's, that's what's gotten me to get through that resistance is I honor it. You know, I will honor it as a feeling instead of as, Oh, I'm doing something wrong because there's some resistance. No, it's more, it's fear-based of something. And it's part of asking those questions is to break down what that fear could mean for that person. So are you having sessions? I know you have an event coming up. Are you having sessions that you feel like address some of these personal and professional pieces that people are going to be working on forever? But I know people right now are specifically working on a ton. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so one of my, one of my, it was a non-negotiable with this event, the day of discovery, was that there was going to be sessions for personal growth and professional growth. Because oh, I, you know, I honor that every educator is in a different place. We all are. And so, you know, there are, knowing that it is in June, right, some, some people are, are done with their school year. I am not. On that day, I still have two weeks, at, like two weeks after. So there are some people that, you know, are some mode, you know, or ready. And they're like, I can't do any more like professional development right now. But you are always you. So personal growth to me does not have a time frame. I don't believe professional growth does either, but I can understand where that may not be the focus in June. But it was so important to me to bring these two pathways that that people get to choose. They get to choose which session they go to during the breakouts, whether they want to focus on personal or focus on professional. And so, yes, the personal ones are all about how do I look within and to identify my why, to identify my identity, to be able to reflect and own who I am in any circumstance. Because I believe, at least for myself, once I learned those skills, holy moly, everything changed. Everything changed. I had more energy. I became a better wife and a better mom and ultimately just a better human being because I knew how to use my energy from morning to night I didn't have that like 3 p.m slump like I, I am more energized throughout the day now because of the work I've done and so being able to bring speakers that can share that out like it just gets me fired up <laughs> so Lindsay I'm actually gonna say I think the timing of this thing is perfect 
right? There are a lot of people have spent the last couple months working and getting that that summer body ready so that when the summer comes, they're ready to go, but they haven't done anything to get their summer mindset ready. And then all of a sudden, summer's going to come and there's going to be a lot of people saying, now, what do I do with my days? What do I do with my time? And it can be hard to spend time in your own head when, you, when you're not managing 30 kids every hour or managing your, your curriculum or your plans. It, the, the timing for this is perfect so people can then spend the rest of the summer getting to know themselves. Mm -hmm. So I, I want you to look at me right now. And this is going to be a hard question, Lindsay. If I signed up for this, would you be able to fix me? <laughs> wow. You weren't supposed to laugh at that, Lindsay. You were supposed to simply say, Dave, you don't need fixing. You weren't supposed to laugh. You don't need fixing. You are perfect as you are. Okay. First of all, we don't fix people. We fix things. People are broken. Things get broken. Okay. Mm. So, no. <laughs> I will not fix you because you don't need fixing. However, um, I do believe the sessions at this event are for everybody. So we, we have gen ed teachers, we have special ed teachers, we have counselors and social workers speaking, we have administrators speaking. We have everybody that might be within a school building speaking on truly what lights them up and what brings them passion. And I, I love that you brought up the timing. It actually was very intentional why I picked June. Um, and I relate it, silly, but I relate it to my morning routine. So you guys know I have been on many 12-hour um, lives and I've talked about being purposeful with your morning. And I think it was the latest one I shared. Your morning really, your morning routine truly starts the night before. And so I believe that next school year actually starts in the summer. And now I what that I what I don't mean is I don't mean your lesson planning your days away and you're doing all new things. But if you wait <laughs> if you wait until the night before school starts, whatever that is for you, you're going to automatically say, I want more time. I want more summer. Where, where did my summer go? I, there wasn't enough time. And there's always enough time. But we have to have the correct mindset on what time is and how we're spending it and how we're using it. So I was very intentional in that my goal for this day is you're going to reflect on this year. You're going to own this year. You are going to celebrate this year because by golly, we were amazing this, this year. <laughs> you are going to connect with educators. You are going to connect with your speakers. You're going to connect with one another. And you're going to reignite that passion that lies within you for next school year and by taking away these tangible tips and reflections and strategies and activities that you can do as you are ready to do this summer to fall back in love with who you are inside and outside of the classroom. I know you have a lot of Teach Better family members that are a part of this. I feel like I was looking at the lineup the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, I know everybody on here. That's so cool. Will you give a few shout outs? Who's going to be presenting? Because I'm sure people listening, I to be honest, guys, listening right now, I'm sure you're already registered. And I'm sure you're like, yeah, Ray, Dave, like you're so late to the game because we've already signed up. But in case you're listening right now and you haven't seen all the details of this event, because I feel like it keeps coming across my newsfeed like crazy because everyone's bragging about it. Who are like some of the speakers that are being featured on this event? Yeah, so our two keynotes are Hans Apple is kicking off the event in the morning, talking all about award-winning culture and getting us feeling joyful in who we are. Um, and then Jamie Fowler White is the ending keynote, and she's going to be bringing the energy all about reflecting and all about pouring into yourself. Um, so those are our like anchoring like keynotes, which I am so like when they both said yes, I'm like there was happy dancing happening in my office. Like I was beyond excited. Um, they have both helped me immensely over the last year. And so having them a part of this event could not be any better. Um, and then there's 10 breakouts. Well, five breakouts, you get to choose between two. Um, so we've got Carly Spina who's talking all about student voice. We've got, um, oh my goodness, Debbie Tannenbaum, who's talking all about technology. Um, so her book just came out. We got Brianna Shainer, who's talking about um, actually time and love languages and how you can use that to get to know your students better. Like, I was just, the, the topics, and again, I think it's because a lot of the topics I think about are behavior related. That's me in my mind. But like, the just the idea, right? 
it, like these ideas and these topics, I was like, holy moly, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> So, Lindsay, I have, it, this is probably a dumb question because, again, everybody else already knows this stuff. I'm telling you, Dave, uh, we're the ones that are late to the game because everyone I know, else seriously. already signed up. But I feel like I'm having flashbacks now. Again, I'm going to date myself and probably overshare again. I've been doing that quite a bit lately. I went to a New Kids on the Block concert back in the day, right? <laughs> and I remember when I was going to get tickets, I had to get like a wristband and they had to do like this lottery to figure out who was actually going to get the tickets to, to be able to go in and, and see the crew. And luckily my wristband was, was picked and I was able to, to go in and, and see the boys. Um, now, Lindsay, I, I feel like that's kind of the same feeling people might have right now when they're hearing the lineup, like they're, they're, they're picturing Jordan and Joey and Danny and like the whole crew right now, you just listed them and they've all got their favorite but they want to make sure they can get in and see them all. You're not going to make everybody cram into an arena and, and take flights to see this, right? This is, this is like people can log in and join from wherever they are. Is that right? It is. Absolutely. Okay. Gotta, so no like, wristbands Joey required. My favorite. I got I to gotta throw that out there. Joey was my favorite. Just okay. Out there. <laughs> Lindsay, yeah. what's the website to register in case somebody's watching and they haven't registered yet? Absolutely. So the easiest place to go is defineuniversity.com. Uh, so remember, university is Y O U. Uh, so defineuniversity.com is right, very first thing you see, you cannot miss it. Um, the other cool part is because, again, I do know some people are on summer break, super jealous, by the way. Some people are on summer break. Uh, the whole event's being recorded. So the nice part of this is um, you will have a basically an organized toolbox of strategies ready for you. So I'm using a platform it's called Kajabi. It's what I use for my courses. And what it does is it basically organizes everything so you're gonna have the videos you're gonna have any resources that are being shared you're gonna have contact info for the speakers so that if you get to November so one of our speakers is talking on regulation power of regulation with our students you get to November and you're like oh man like I'm gonna like some, I need something you're gonna go to that category you're gonna rewatch the video or you're gonna email or you know message the, the speaker directly because that's that's the community feel for this with me like, I do not want this to be a one day only event. I want this to be on ongoing connection, um, which I know everybody at Teach Better gets that because that is a huge piece to this. One day things don't work. We need to experience them day in and day out. And so that, you know, that's kind of like an added bonus, right? So if you can only make part of the day, maybe your vacation that day, that's okay, right? You will have this organized toolbox for you. Um, Whenever you need it. So thank you, Liv. Yes, that is the that was the website. So exciting. Dave, this is the perfect way to like like tie up with a nice little bow, like our bi-weekly family check-in for our summer break. Like this was the perfect last one to say, here's some strategies we all can go use with our students right now. Here's an event that is perfect for educators, whether they want to work on professional stuff or they just want to work on personal stuff. I won't lie, guys. I'm kind of in like the personal category right now. If this event was tomorrow, I'd be like, I want to work on me. I'm not sure I can handle any much more, any more like professional development today. And I'm sure if you asked me a week, I'd flip flop and change my answer. So I am just, I feel like this is the perfect little send off. Don't you think? I agree. Well, honestly, I, I thought you were going to say because we were talking new kids on the block, but yeah, all of that other stuff too. I feel like it, it is, it's, it's launching people in and saying, hey, and very soon you can continue to learn and, and grow and pick your lane, personal, professional, both. And it doesn't necessarily stop right here. So I think it's great. I love it. Guys, don't forget, there's also a lot going on with the team. I hope you all go and first make sure you're registered. Double check your registration for this day of discovery, which is happening very, very soon. So if you don't register right now, you're going to forget. So really quick, I'll throw up the website defineuniversity.com. That way you can go get registered. In addition to that, we have a ton going on with the Teach Better team. So make sure to stay up to date by visiting teachbetter.com. Guys, there was like a bajillion blogs published this week. There was a bajillion podcast episodes published this week. We have our webinar series. Uh, registration is closing in just a bit because those are going to kick off for the summer. So if you're in the mood for some TLC, some teacher love, and just to continue your connection with the Teach Better clan, please make sure to get all that information. And if you can't find something, please reach out. Like if the link for defineuniversity.com doesn't work, 
please reach out to one of us. We'll get you the link. Or if something that you are looking for on the blog isn't loading, please reach out. We we are here to help because that's what family does. So um, I want to wish everybody a wonderful week. Dave, you have a big week ahead. I know you're traveling. You have a lot going on. I get to meet you for the first time in person. So crazy. So crazy. But I'm so excited. Lindsay, I know we won't see you on Wednesday, but I hope you have a wonderful week as well, supporting all the teachers and students that you do. And And for everybody else. And 10 buildings. 10 buildings. I know. I was was crazy when you said that. Uh, But for everyone else, please let us know if you need anything. We're always here. Uh, Lindsay, thanks for joining us with all these ideas. Like, holy cow. It was so good. So, so good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. (laughs) All right, guys. Happy Sunday. All thank, uh, be thankful for the wonderful life we have. Spend some family time together. Happy Memorial Day, and we will connect with you soon. Bye, guys.